All right, welcome back to Mr. PLS with Algebra 2. This is Unit 1, Topic 3, SLT 21. We're exploring the relationship between logarithmic functions and exponential functions. So in this case, we're doing a warm-up with an exponential equation. So if g of 7 is 23, so we know that by the coordinate 7, 23. And we would know that it's inverse, which g inverse of 23. So the inverse would always be the same x and y's but reverse. So that's 23, 7. So the inverse of g of g inverse of 23 would have to be 7. 7 is your answer. What is the domain of h of x? So if this was the given function, we know that's going infinitely left and infinitely to the right. So we know it's all real numbers. The range means the height. So it looks like we have a horizontal asymptote at 3. So the range would have to be above 3. And as I just mentioned, the asymptote is, oh, I don't know why I keep writing 0 for this. It's 3. So 3 is that imaginary dotted line that this is never going to hit. So no matter how far you go to the left, it's never going to go below or even hit 3. All right, so as I mentioned before, we're going to talk about the exponential logarithmic functions and evaluate expressions with them. So uh, in this first activity, this is just to get us to understand what a logarithmic function is. So log logarithmic functions basically is like saying what power. So we're saying what power of 3 is 243. So what power of 3 is 243? And the answer is... Five. So in this case, is what power of 6 is 1 216th? What power of 6, so base 6, is 1 216th? And the answer is negative 3, because anything to a negative exponent has been flipped. And 6 to the third power is 216, 6 times 6 times 6. All right, so same thing with the last one. So that's what power of 9 is is 1, and the answer is 0, because anything to the 0th power is 1. Uh, for the next line, same thing, but instead of writing the word what power, I'm going to change it to the word log. So log of base 16. So it's a little tiny, it's in uh, subscript, which means I'm writing a kind of like an exponent, but written in the bottom right-hand corner. So log of base 16 of 2 is 1 fourth. So 16 to the 1 fourth power is 2. Uh, so this is log of base 10, which is common log, of 1,000 is 3. So 10 to the third power is 1,000. Now, in the future, you'll see that I won't always write 10 when it's logarithmic. When it's log 10, that's base, I'm sorry, when the base is 10, it's common log, and therefore you don't need to write it. So you can just say log of 1,000. So this is log of... Base B is R, and the answer would be K. All right, so now we're doing it the other way around. So now we're rewriting it from logarithmic notation into exponential notation. Because remember, logarithmics, logarithmic functions and exponential functions are inverses of each other. So we have 5 to the power of 4 is 625. This is, remember, this is common log, so this is base 10, because there's no base here given, to the negative first power is 1 tenth. This is 27 to the 2 thirds power is 9. Now remember, 2 thirds power is kind of like 27, the second power with third root, 27 to the 2 thirds power. So if you use a calculator, 27 squared, I don't know what that is, but then take the cubic root of that answer, you should get an answer of 9. All right. Um, consider the following with base 2. So all of these are base 2. So this is 2 to the power of what is 124? Uh, 1024. So I believe that's 10. So 2 to the 10th power is 1024. So 10 is your answer. All right, so now what I can do is I can change this to exponential notation. So this is 2 to the what power? So this is 2 to the what power is 128. Now 128 is the same thing as 2 to the 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So that's to the seventh power. So in this case, once the bases are the same, then we can cross them off, and therefore their exponents must also be the same. So x is 7. 
Same thing goes for this one. So this is two to the what power? So I'll put an x for the what power equals uh, square root of eight. So square root of eight. So eight is the same thing as two to the third power. And as I just shown you in that last screen, so this is really two to the x power. This is really two to the three halves power which means x must be 3 halves. So this is 2 to the what power? What power of 2 is equal to 1 16th? So 1 16th is the same thing as 2 to the negative 2, 4, 8, 16, negative fourth. So 2 to the what? And once your bases are the same, then the exponents must also be the same. So it's negative 4. Now for the last two questions, these are not possible. And there's a reason why, because 2 to the what power is 0. There is no exponent that will ever give you a 0. Matter of fact, no matter what the base is, no matter if it's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, um, it'll never have any exponent that will ever be 0. Because whenever you raise something to an exponent, it's either going to increase if it's a positive number above 1, or it's going to decrease if it's a number between 0 and 1, meaning it's a fraction. It's going to decrease. Uh, so it's not possible. So if you have a negative number, I'm sorry, it's going, to, it's going to decrease if this number is 0 to 1, but if it's a negative number, then it's going to simply make it into a fraction. All right, so that is not possible. So neither is this one. 2 to the what power is negative 1 32nd? Now, you might be thinking 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. You might be thinking it's 2 to the negative 5th. And the reason why you're thinking that is because 2 to the 5th is 32. So what 2 to the negative 5th is actually 1 over 32. It's not a negative 1 32nd. It's positive 1 32nd. There's no exponent that you could ever raise this power to and ever get a negative answer. Now, unless you're thinking that this is a negative, well, technically that's not exponential because that's going to go negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, had the base been negative to begin with. All right, same thing goes for the base 3. So 3 to the power of x is 243, and I believe that's uh, 7 if I'm not mistaken. No, 3, 9, uh, 27, 81, 243. Okay, so that's 5. So 3 to the x power is equal to 3 to the fifth power, and therefore x must be 5. All right, so same thing goes for all these questions, but once again, you'll notice when it's base 3, there's no exponent of 3 that could ever equal 0. That's not possible. Same thing, it can never be equal to a negative. Same thing if it's base 5. Now, keep in mind that you can't put these into a calculator. Uh, the reason being is because a calculator bases itself on base 10, because that's what our number system is based upon. So everything that the calculator does calculates everything with base 10, meaning you have 10 ones, and that makes... Uh, 10 ones make 110, and 10 10s make 100. So 10 of any value is going to make the next placeholder. So if it's base 5, that means there's 5 ones that would make the next placeholder. But that's not how the calculator works. The calculator doesn't calculate like that, so it's not going to be able to do that. You would have to change it to common log, which I may or may not go over in a, in a future video. So is there any positive number of b so that the expression of log 0 makes sense? No, it doesn't, because no matter what the base is, whether it's 9 or 8 or 7 or 6 or 5, you can never make any exponent ever equal 0, nor can you ever make it make a negative. So these are not possible. All right, so this last concept that I want to go over very quickly, so log of base 2 of 8, so what power of 2 is 8? That's 3. What power of 2 is 4? That's 2. What power of 2 is 32? 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So that's 5. And you'll see that 3 plus 2 does equal 5. That is a correct solution. 3 squared is 9. 3 squared is 9. And 3 to the fourth power is 81. What you're noticing here is that as long as you have the same base for all of them and it's addition, then it's you can simply, in this case, log base 3 of 9, you can just multiply this number times this number, and it equals this number. So 8 times 4 is 32. And this only works if they're all the same, if it's addition, and they all have the same base. So they all have the same base here. So uh, what power of 4 is 4? That's 1. What power of 4 is 16? That's 2. What power of 4 is 64? That's 3. 1 plus 2 makes 3. So this equals 1, this part equals 2, and this part equals 3. All right, so I'm going to move on from there. So getting to the homework, uh, 2 to the 2 thirds power. So you can simply just put this in your graphing calculator. Uh, I'm just going to show you a couple of tricks. Now, this you're going to have to do yourself. So this plus 2, that is always the asymptote. So the asymptote is right here. 
And this two right here is typically the y-intercept, but it, since this has been translated up, so just like in geometry, so we have, you have translations and reflections. So in this case, it's been translated up to. So what would have been right here as the y-intercept is actually shifted up to. So there's the shift. And then the next number is going to be 2 thirds as big. So I'm going to have to just kind of make guesses here. And the next one is going to be 3 halves as big up here. So it's going to look something kind of like this. And it's exponential decay because the growth rate is a fraction. So it's less than 1. And there's no negative here. So sometimes you might have seen that if this is negative, then that's going to change it to, to growth instead of decay. But this is decay because it's less than 1. Um, the ones that I did do, so anything to the 0th power, so 0th power is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. Um, you can do the same, or you can just put this into the graphing calculator to copy off the table. Uh, looking at the graph, though, so the domain is all real numbers because it's going left and right infinitely. The range is everything above 0, so that's y is greater than or equal to, no, not or equal to, I'm sorry, just y is greater than 0. The y-intercept was 4, as I explained. That was the y-intercept, but it got shifted up to more, so it's, so it's 4. And the asymptote here is y equals 2. Okay, uh, clearing that all out. Last question. Okay, so it doesn't want to clear out, so it's no big deal. Uh, same thing goes over here, but there is no asymptote, so I'm going to simply put the asymptotes right here at 0. Uh, the y-intercept is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. And the next number is going to be half as big. So half of 5, the next number is going to be 2 and a half. The next number is going to be 1.25. Whoops, right there. Then uh, let's see, about right there. And if I want to go to the previous number, it would be twice as big. So doubling it this way, so it would be 10. This is also exponential decay. I know that because the rate is less than 1. Domain is all real numbers. Range is everything above 0. Y is greater than 0. The y-intercept would be 5. As mentioned, it's right there. And the asymptote is y equals 0. Because all exponential functions have horizontal asymptotes, whereas logarithmic functions, which I'll get into next, have vertical asymptotes. All right, thanks again for watching. Please give it a like to help you learn anything about exponential um, functions. Or in this case, we evaluated some logarithmic logarithmic equations or expressions sorry logarithmic expressions all right thanks again for watching have a great day